Hello everybody. Today we're going to be doing uh, line integrals. Specifically, we're going to do the circulation and flux of a vector field through a closed curve. So here's the actual problem. We're going to do the circulation and flux of this vector field F, which is given by X and Y. So we're just doing a two-dimensional problem today. We want the circulation around this curve that's shown over here. It's a closed curve. All right, it's got this semicircle here in the top, and that's got a straight line segment from x equals minus a to plus a. So we want the circulation around that curve. As well, we also want to calculate the flux through the curve. So let's start with circulation. Okay, circulation is defined to be this integral the integral of f dot dr around this curve c. Okay, this is a line integral, which you've already gotten a little bit familiar with already. This is just a special line integral uh, called the circulation. There's several ways to write this integral. This is a very common way. Another way you might see is f dot v dt this is actually the same if you remember that the vector v is just dr over dt. So therefore, v times dt is just equal to dr. So these are the same things. And this is probably, these two forms are probably the most commonly used to calculate circulation. I'm going to use this one, but if you want, you'd like to, you can try it yourself using this form. You should get exactly the same answer. Okay, so. When we have a curve like this where we've got two pieces, basically, we have a semicircular piece and we have a straight line piece, we've got to break this up into two parts. Each part we have to parameterize separately and do the integral separately, and that at the end we can add those two integrals up to get our final answer. So let's do that first part. We have to parameterize this semicircle. As soon as I hear a semicircle or hear a circle, I'm thinking I need one of these things to be cosine and one of these things to be sine. So let's try it. Here we go. R of t, this is how I parameterize a curve. It's got a radius of a, so a cosine of t, a sine of t, where t is going to go from 0 to pi because we only want the semicircle. Okay. Now, once you've done this a few times, you're going to be able to do this right away. Why is this the circle? Well, if you see that this thing squared would be a squared cosine squared, this thing squared would be a squared sine squared. When I add these two, remember that this is our x and this is our y. x squared plus y squared, that's going to give me a squared times cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So a squared times 1 is a squared. So I recover this equation up here. So this, as long as t goes from 0 to pi, this is my semicircle. This is how I parameterize that semicircle, and that's what we need to do in order to do this integral. Okay, so let's take the derivative dr equals, let's take the derivative of each component here, so minus a sine t, a cosine t, and then each of these things has a dt. I'm just going to bring it outside my vector bracket. Right? This basically just means each of these things does have a dt. I'm just going to pull it out, make it a little bit cleaner and nicer. Okay, so this was, I guess I can call this part C1, and let's call this straight line part C2, Okay, just to make sure I'm keeping things straight here. So this is C1. And we'll do C2 a little bit later. For right now, let's do the integral. Let's just go ahead and do that integral. Okay, so f dot dr, basically just doing f dot dr on C1. That's equal to. Now remember that f 
is this vector field here. It's the vector field x comma y. Well, that's really nice and easy. Where do I get the x and y from? Well, we get that from our parameterization. This is x, this is y. So actually, our vector field x, y looks just like this. f, which is x and y, is just a cosine t, a sine t. Now we're going to take the dot product of that with dr, right? That's what we're doing, f dot dr. I'm just going to write that in now, minus a sine t, a cosine t, dt, and t is going from 0 to pi. Okay, let's take our dot product, 0 to pi. Dot product means I take this times this plus this times this. Let's see what I'm going to get. Looks like minus a squared sine t cosine t plus a squared sine t cosine t. Well, this is looking pretty easy because you see right away that these two terms are just going to cancel. We don't even have anything to do here. So this integral is just 0. Remember that this was just integrating the first part right here. We did the circulation for this very first part. turns out to be 0. OK, to do the second part, we need the parameterization for that curve, which, just remind myself scrolling up here, is just this line which goes from minus a to a, and it's all along the x-axis. Well, that's a nice, easy parameterization. r of t equals, how about we just do uh, t0, right, because y is 0 along the x-axis, and we'll just make t go from minus a to a, and that will do it for us. dr, we're going to need that as well. Take the derivative, 1, 0, dt. Now we're ready for c2, f dot dr. Okay, t is going to go from minus a to a. We take this as our x, this as our y, and we put it into our function, which was the vector x, y, which is about as easy as it gets, because that just means that we're just going to say, okay, x, y, dotted into dr, 1, 0, dt. There we go, not too bad. Let's just go ahead and do that integral minus a to a. Looks like I'm just going to, if I take the dot product here, I'm just going to get t times 1 plus 0. I just get t. So t dt. Okay, that's an integral. That's just t squared over 2 evaluated from a to minus a. So I'm just going to do this all in one step. I hope you can follow me here. But we get a squared over 2 minus minus a squared over 2 and looks like, once again, we're going to get 0. Well, what we would normally do is add this to this to get our final answer. We're still going to do that, but it's a really easy thing to do here. f dot dr around the entire curve is just 0. So we would say that the circulation of this field, f, around that particular curve, c, is 0. Well, let's move on to the flux. Wow, it's hard to believe. Look at this. This thing is already set up for me. How did that happen? Incredible. Now, we're going to use the same curve. That means that all the work you did for determining R for C1 and C2, those are still all valid. We can just reuse that stuff. 
What's going to change is our line integral itself. The flux is defined differently. Okay, flux is defined to be the line integral where instead of doing f dot dr, we do f dotted into a normal vector. Now if a curve is in the plane, by convention, the normal vector points away it would point away from this region. So the normal vectors would point out away, if you can imagine these normal vectors. They're all perpendicular to the curves at every point, but they all point out. So I'm not going to derive it here, but we can rewrite this integral in this way. If f is written as m and n, where m and n are just two functions, in this case, our, in this particular problem, our function m is equal to x and our function n is equal to y. Given that, right, this flux integral is given by m dy minus n dx. And often this formula is written like this with a little circle around the integral, which says that this formula the derivation of this formula holds only if we go counterclockwise around the function, around the curve C, which is actually what we, we did for the other problem automatically. But here, in order to use this formula, you have to do that. If you don't do that, you'll get the wrong sign. You'll get the negative of the correct answer. Well, in this case, we, did, we actually did a lot of the hard work. C1 and C2 are all ready to go. So let's just do C1 first. Okay. So our integral is, okay, our function m here, right, was x, because remember that, right, f is equal to m, n, and that for this problem is equal to x, y. So m is actually the function x. What is x for c1 is just a cosine t. So there I put that, a cosine t. What is dy? Well, here's y. We calculated dy. It's a cosine t. So I put a cosine t, and it has a dt next to it as well. So there we go. So we get a cosine t times a cosine t dt. Okay, what about the next part? Well, just minus, now I need the function n, which is y. y is a sine t. And I need dx now. Well, dx is right here. It's minus a sine t dt. So that's minus a sine t dt. And that's actually it. We just have to go put our bounds in there. We know that um, we're going from 0 to pi. Well, that's not so bad. Let's actually do this integral now. 0 to pi. We get a squared cosine squared. These minus signs become a plus sign, and we get another a squared. But now we have a sine squared and a dt, common to both. Looks so like I can put that in parentheses just to make sure. It's clear. Oops, I forgot my... Do a little correction here. Forgot the t next to the sine squared. There we go. That's a little bit neater. Okay. a squared cosine squared plus a squared and sine squared. I hope you realize very quickly that that's just equal to a squared. That's just a constant. So the integral just becomes pi a squared. Nice and easy. 
Okay, we're not done yet. Getting there. C2. Oops, not 0 to pi. We're going to go minus a to a. Okay. So we're using C2 now. So we're going to have m, which is x, right? which is now in this case just going to be t. dy is this thing right here. So we're actually just going to take t times 0 dt. Well, that's not very interesting. That's just going to be 0, 0 dt. Okay, minus, now we need to do n dx. n is y, so n is 0. dx is dt, so once again we get another 0 dt. So this thing is just 0. So our total integral, the integral of c, f dot n hat ds, which is what we call flux, is just equal to pi a squared. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the problem.